Kia ora year 12, this is the differential equation question that we looked at in class today and it's from this year's um, June session of the A-level exams and it's paper 33, question 8. So I think it's on the trickier side of DE questions just because you have to be very careful with some fiddly little details um, and it starts off like this. So we've got a number of insects in a population is N and the variation in the number of insects is modelled by this DE. So we're given the DE, we don't have to form it. And k is a constant, n is a continuous variable, which is interesting because n is the number of insects. So actually in the end I've actually rounded that to the nearest integer. And we're told that when t is 0, n is equal to 100. We have to solve the DE and we have to get a relation between n, k and t. We don't have to get n equals blah blah blah. So we just have to have a link between n, k and t with no derivatives in it. So that's step one. Then we have to find the value of k using a second piece of information, which is that after 50, I'm guessing 50 days, oh yep, t is days, after 50 days there are 625 insects. And lastly we have to get an expression for n in terms of t, so this is where we do need to have n equals blah blah blah, and then we have to look at that and figure out the greatest value of n predicted by this model. And we need to not go too fast at that last two marks. So working through it, we start off with the usual pattern, dn by dt is equal to k times n to the power of 3 over 2 times cosine of 0.02t. I need to separate the variables and I'm going to leave the k sitting up here and I'll get this. So 1 over n to the 3 over 2 dn is equal to k cos of 0.02t dt. And we'll integrate both sides with respect to n and t. So integrating this is, this is n to the negative 3 over 2. And now I'm going to complete the integration here. So cosine will integrate to sine of 0.02t. I need to have k here, and I need to divide out the 0.02. And I'm going to whack a plus c on the end, and we'll figure that out later on. Um, Right, let's keep on going with this. This will give me n to the power of negative a half, and I need to undo that when I'm differentiating by dividing by negative 1 over 1 half. So the reciprocal here gives me negative 2 here. And you can check back that this is going to differentiate, yeah, that this is going to differentiate to give me that. So that's all good. Here, um, 1 over 0 0.02 is the same as 1 over 2 over 100, which is equal to 100 over 2, which is 50. Now, you don't have to do all of that, but you have to not make a mistake with it. So some of you probably want to go a little bit slower on this step than you did in class. So that's where we've got down to. Now, that's enough to get a relationship between n, t, and k, but I've still got to use it's not quite enough for this first five marks because I have to get rid of that constant c. So when t is equal to 0, n is equal to 100. So negative 2 over root 100 is equal to 50k sine of 0. Where are we? Plus c. So negative 2 over 10, negative 0 0.2 is equal to 0 plus c. c is equal to negative 0 0.2. Chucking that back in, what do we get? Well, we've got negative 2 over root n is equal to 50k sine of 0.02t minus 0.2. So that's my first tick for the first five marks. I'm going to clean this up by taking out a common factor of 2. I don't have to do that. So that's still pretty ugly as DE solutions go, but that's fine for us now to substitute in the next value, which is t equals 50 and n is equal to 625. So the square root of n will be 25. That gives me negative 1 over 25 is equal to 25k sine of 0.02 times 50, so sine of 1 minus 0.1. 
negative 0 0.04 plus 0.1 is equal to 25 sine 1 times k. So k is equal to whatever that number was divided by 0 0.06. So k works out to be 0 0.002852. So no matter what form you had up here, like you might have left it like this, or you might have done this, or you might have gone further with the manipulation, that is the only correct answer for k. Let's substitute that back in and see what we get now. So we've got negative 1 we're going to just, all we're doing here is substituting that k value in and timesing it by 25. So negative 1 over root n is equal to 0 0.071304, that's 25k, sine of 0 0.02t minus 0.1. So 1 over root n, whoops, so I would just rather work with it like this, 1 over root n, not negative 1 over root n, is equal to 0.1 minus this. And now I need to get an expression for n. I'm going to square both sides. And now I'll take the reciprocal. So n is equal to 1 over all of that. And that's the next couple of marks in the question. All right. Now, what do we have to do? Where's, this, where's the question? So that was the second part, right? Find the value of k. Oh, ex obtain an impression... Uh, Obtain an expression of for n in terms of t and find the greatest value of n predicted by this model. So let's look slowly at what we've got. We've got a fraction. So we want the denominator as low as possible. So we've got this. Take away this. So the bigger we can get this, the smaller this is going to be, and the bigger this is going to be. So we want to maximize sine of 0.02t. And that will happen. So the biggest possible value of that will be when this is equal to 1. So notice you weren't asked when this happens. You were just asked what's the highest number of insects. Right, so if you wanted to figure out when it happens, then you have to di differentiate. You go back to dn by dt equals blah blah, and you set that equal to zero. We don't have to do all of that. All we have to do is to take this and substitute it in here. So n max is going to equal 1 over 0 0.1 minus 0 0.071304 times 1 squared. And when I did that, I got... 1214.387 and I rounded that to um, this to so I said the highest number don't hang up I've got a graph to show you so no one run away because this actually is a really cool kind of model uh, 1214 insects is the highest number in this model so when you chuck that into GeoGebra, you get this graph, which I thought some of you would probably quite like. And I really liked it because it shows that we've got the question right, basically, because if you chuck in the expression here, right, so if you just, oh, wrong pen, if you just chuck this into GeoGebra, you get this graph. Things that are really cool to see. Look, you can see that it's going through 0 and 100. And also you can see, oh, well, you can't actually quite see here, but after 6, 25 days, it was going through the right value for that as well. And you can see that the peak value is just above 1,200, matching up to our, our 1,214. And I'm sure those of you doing bio could think about a story that we're telling here. This is probably a story about massively fast growth of the insect population, and then I guess they run out of space and they start to 
die and then once they've died enough maybe they eat each other or something gross then it all starts all over again so they never die out completely we end up down here if you wanted to find out where this value was you would just look for when this expression here was equal to negative one and you could do some playing around with that um, so that's all for now i'm going to do the integration question in a couple of minutes and then take a look at some past paper questions for tomorrow thanks for watching